Welcome to the Bambanani series. Every child has a right to quality education and teaching inclusively can contribute to achieving that goal. This series of videos illustrates how teachers are teaching inclusively in South African classrooms. The videos focus on teaching numeracy and literacy in the foundation and intermediate phases. To support participation and learning by all learners, the teachers in the clips differentiate their teaching methodologies, content and assessment strategies, and classroom environment. Let's join hands to teach every child. My name is Sandy Bota. I'm a maths uh, teacher. I teach grade fives. So we started off with a story to really ignite their imagination and to get them to figure out what the topic was about. So instead of telling them that we were learning maths, they had to figure it out. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Miss Bota. Today we're going to be learning about something so exciting. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you a short story first. So once upon a time, there was a man called Charles Cotra. Say Charles Cotra. Charles Cotra. Charles Cotra was a delivery guy. He owned a delivery business. You know what a delivery business is, right? Yes. He delivered things from door to door and he got paid for it. So one day he receives a call from a potential client. Hello, Mr. Charles Cotra. You know, I've got this huge industrial fridge here. I need to know how much it weighs first. And they had a predicament. Well, you can guess it. Mr. Charles Cotrard gets there, he loads the fridge onto the bucky, and the bucky goes <laughs> The first thing that Miss Boota did was she asked learners to, in their imaginations, think of a specific scenario that pertained to maths. She, she really did this to get learners into the lesson and get them engaged and also see why um, estimating maths can be relevant to their lives. After that, um, uh, we discussed the different units of measurement, so grams and kilograms, and we discussed why we use grams and kilograms, and the learners understood that grams are we used to measure smaller objects and kilograms slightly larger objects. How much do you think I weigh? Who can raise their silent hand and guess? How much do I possibly weigh? Say, oh. um, 45. 45 watts. 45 watts. Ooh. 45 kilograms. 45 kilograms, which leads me to how we me measure mass. We measure mass in grams and kilograms. Kilograms we usually use for something that's really big, like my soul. And grams we use for small little objects. And we'll try that just now. Miss Boeta taught a really amazing lesson because she got learners to relate their prior knowledge and what they knew about the world to the lesson that she was teaching. So for example, she was talking about mass and she said, what happens, um, how, how do you estimate something? And, and we find that estimation is, is a really important skill to have and it's very rarely taught very well in, in schools. And, in, and, and that's why I use that example about Mr. Charles Catra, so that you know exactly if you'll be able to, uh, to lift something or not. And I also find that just with maths in general, if learners can estimate an answer, uh, when they get the wrong answer, they'll know that, okay, now there's something wrong with this answer. So I feel that it's important, even in just general life, knowing how much you weigh, for example, um, and you know, knowing that, okay, now there's something wrong with the scale because it's telling me I weigh so much, but I actually estimated that, that I weigh X amount. I really liked that Miss Boeta encouraged her learners to estimate the weight of something before they weighed it. So this would um, encourage learners to, to give a guess and they had to give a good and reasonable guess before they weighed something. This helped the learners to corroborate their, their estimates with the real measurements. So the learners were working in groups, all right, and it was mixed ability groups so that they could help each other. And what I did during the lesson is I walked around to figure out if their estimations were more or less correct, if they'd grasped the concept. And I found that there were learners who were slightly off uh, the topic and learners who were really struggling. I then supported them and helped them and practically measured things with them to get to a more accurate estimation. 
We saw lots of wonderful conversations happening in the groups, um, in the classrooms, and also peer-to-peer. -peer. So learners sitting next to each other were discussing what they thought um, an object would weigh. So, learners, there's different kinds of learners. We've got visual learners, we've got audio learners, we've got learners who really like stories and that's all they want to listen to. And we've got learners that love music and learn better with sounds and hearing things. So I came up with an estimation song so that even if they don't pick up much of the practical work, they'll always remember the importance of estimation that will then help us to get an accurate measurement. So they really loved that. They were rapping along, they were singing along, and I think that that they'll remember. And I actually made up a song about estimation. Okay, it's a very quick rap song. You're gonna rap with me? Yes. Okay, it goes estimation. Estimation. To my destination. To my destination. Estimation. Estimation. To my destination. Okay, and that reminds you that you estimate in order to figure out the actual one, your destination. So because uh, we've got bigger numbers, what I usually do for learners who need support is I have one-on-one -on -one support to them at my table. So you understand um, how to convert grams to kilograms, but I want to support you in converting uh, kgs, kilograms to grams, okay? So this sum says 100 grams plus two kgs. Now, before, because now you've got two different units, right? Yes. Now, you're going to need to convert these <coughs> kgs to grams. How do you think you're going to do that? You're going to say two times a thousand. Okay, so you're going to say two times a thousand, because how many grams do you have in one kg? A thousand. Okay, yes, so in one kg, you have 1,000 grams, okay? So if you've got 1,000 grams in one kg, then in two kgs you have? 2,000. So let's show that working out. So what would you write? I want you to write it for me. You would say? Just to have fun at the end and wrap it up, we did a little dance for every child who got the answer correct. And yeah, they love dancing, they're 11. Would we measure this whiteboard marker in grams or kilograms? Let's ask Sasha. Yes, okay, we do a little dance. Every time somebody gets the answer right, high five. Okay. At the end of the lesson, Ms. Boerte did a little formative assessment to ask the whole class about what they had learned during the lesson. And she asked a couple of the learners a few questions and the whole class did a dance in celebration when the learners got this correct. And that was a great way to affirm learners that they had learned something during the lesson.